to just one more watch. I don't know why I'm smiling, it's actually a bit of a sad video today. This is gonna be my last video that I upload on YouTube. After over three years making 400 odd videos, trying to find the best value watches from around the world to bring to all of you, I think I may have found the world's best value watch in the form of this Pagani Designs Rolex Submariner homage. There seems therefore very little point in continuing the show. So I'll be putting my camera on eBay later on, I'm going to put the watch winders in the rubbish and I'm going to put my vast t-shirt collection in the nearest charity collection bin. Sorry folks, it's all over. Ciao. Yeah, okay, perhaps I'm being just a little bit hasty. Surely this watch can't be as good as the price and the specs suggest. The thumbnail says $75. That's the most you're gonna pay for this one on AliExpress. If you pick it up on sale, it's gonna be in the high 60s. It's gonna be even cheaper than that. And check the specs that you get for that price. Full size stainless steel automatic dive watch, 100 meters of water resistance and a screw down crown, sapphire crystal ceramic bezel insert, display case back so you can see this Seiko NH35 hacking and hand winding 24 dual auto. Stainless steel bracelet with solid end links, solid links with screws and an on the fly adjustable bracelet clasp. Surely there's gotta be something wrong with it for that price. Let's flip the camera and see if there is. So I bought my Pagani Design PD-1639 from the Pagani Design official store on AliExpress. I will obviously leave a link to their store in the description of the video. It arrived in good shape and in good time. Five different colorways available, including a rather nice looking gold and black two-tone. I went for the green one. The most you're gonna pay for this watch is $74.99, currently on special on the 11.11 sale for $67.49. And I must say, you get a chunk of watch for that price. Nice new packaging, they must have changed this in the last couple of months. Matte finish box here, polishing cloth, instruction manual, warranty card, and there is the watch itself. No points for originality here, it's pretty much a Rolex Submariner clone, but they have taken a bigger is better approach. They've copied the new look larger size case and they've bulked up the dimensions. This one is 43 mil in diameter, 13 and a half mil thick, 52 mil lug tip to lug tip, yet it cuts back down to 20 mil lugs, narrowing down to 14, back up to 16 at the clasp. Sized up for me, seven inch wrist, this one weighs in at a not inconsiderable 159 grams. So it is a, a chunky big watch on wrist. Stainless steel, stainless steel case, crown, bezel, and full stainless steel bracelet. As I mentioned, it has solid end links. Solid links with screws, I will show you them a little later on. And a reasonable copy of the Rolex style clasp, Pagani design etched into the clasp there just to differentiate it from a Rolex. Case finishing is perfectly decent for a watch at this price, just what you'd expect. Mimicking the Submariner with high polished sides and a brushed finish on the lugs. We've got a signed crown here, screw down crown with crown guards and a brushed finish to that bezel. So the bezel is a unidirectional rotating dive time. That's slightly inconvenient, 90 clicks. Never sure why any manufacturer would want to do a 90 click bezel. The action is okay. There's a little bit of bounce back, but once it locks into place, it is reasonably secure. And as discussed, that is a ceramic bezel insert. Zoomed in on the dial, it's a mixture of printed and applied. We have a printed Pagani design logo underneath the 12 o'clock index, automatic water resistant 10 bar 100 meters, and Japan movement advertising that Seiko movement there, just beneath the six o'clock index. All indexes are applied, the classic Rolex Submariner pattern, triangle at 12, large batons at the six and the nine, and circular indices everywhere else, minute track all the way around the outside and quite a pronounced sunburst effect here. I do like a Hulk homage myself. The green just adds a bit of point of difference. I do find the black ones a little bit mundane. Cyclops here, as you can see, is actually pretty usable, reasonably well applied, magnifies the date frame window nicely. And that dial is covered by sapphire crystal. Now call me a cynical man, Please, call me a cynical man, I am a cynical man. I always like to test the sapphire on these cheap Chinese watches when they come in to make sure that they're not telling us porky pies. So here we have our Seiko Samurai, which has hard legs, 
a Seiko Saab which definitely has sapphire and one state-of-the-art diamond selector too. First of all, I'm going to have a look at the Saab. I get a nice strong read there into the orange. Move over to the Samurai, not even a flicker. Onto the Pagani in the middle and again a nice strong read into the orange. They're not lying to us, that's sapphire. Finishing on the bracelet is perfectly up to snuff for a $75 watch. Brush finish on top, high polish on the side, three link oyster. A little bit of play there, but nothing too out of the ordinary. And as I said, screw links. Who'd have thought you could get screw links on a watch this cheap? Now, the clasp mechanism here, it looks like a Rolex glide lock, apart from the Pagani design logo etched in there conveniently to remind you that you didn't pay 10 grand for a Rolex sub. Fold over like that, it even looks kind of like a Submariner clasp underneath. However, it doesn't have a glide lock facility. It does, however, mimic another Rolex patent, the flip flop, the easy link that does give you a little bit of on the fly adjustment. Quite remarkable for the money, this one. And popping one of those bracelet links to show you really perhaps the star of the show. There's a lot of value to be had here, but when you get a Seiko NH35 in the back of the watch for less than 100 bucks, you're doing very well indeed. 24 dual hacking and hand winding auto, roughly a 40 hour power reserve between minus 20 and plus 40 seconds per day variance. I'll pop this one in the time grapher and see how it gets on, shall I? Beat error is perhaps a little bit higher than I would have liked, but I can't complain about a plus one seconds per day variance and a very healthy amplitude on the flat on its back default position. I've said many times this Seiko movement is really all you arguably need in a watch. Now getting this watch onto my seven inch wrist and it's big, but it actually wears all right. I think a very good decision by Pagani to stick with the 20 mil narrowing down to taper. So even if it is, Quite a big watch on wrist with 43, just over 43 mil in diameter and 52 mil lug tip to lug tip. That pulls it right back down. Reasonable weight, 150 odd grams, but it is quite nicely balanced because of this stainless steel bracelet. You do definitely notice the extra size over a 40 mil Submariner homage though, but I guess that's the point. That's their point of difference. Not only have they stuffed it full of all the specs you could possibly want, they've also pumped up the case size. And that's it outside in some natural light as well. You always get a different light play from a ceramic bezel insert than you do with a aluminium bezel insert. Quite a strong sunburst effect on the dial of this green one. I'd imagine it's the same for the blue one as well. Not so sure if they've also gone for sunburst on black. Sitting on top of my wrist there, not much curvature to the case as is the way of the Rolex Submariner case, but it still manages to do a reasonable job. This all sounds peachy, Jody. Tell us about the negatives. Surely it can't be that good. Well, I've used this analogy before. It's like spreading a bit of butter on your toast. $75 is not a lot of butter and it has a long way to spread across this big piece of toast here. So inevitably, there are a couple of compromises. There are a couple of areas where this watch falls short. The loom, for example, is pretty much non-existent. I haven't found a decent budget diver under $100 yet with decent loom. There's a whiff of loom on the hands, but bugger all on the indices. The screw down crown was another area that gave me a little bit of concern. I think perhaps the crown tube is perhaps too short. You don't get much purchase, maybe a half a turn, three quarters of a turn at most. There is, however, a rubber seal in there, which does fill me with a little bit of confidence, but I would have preferred to see that crown screw down a little bit further than is currently. And then there's the clasp. It looks good, but I suspect they maybe tried to do a bit too much for not a lot of money with this one, replicating the glide lock look and putting some on the fly adjustment in there. It's okay, it was a little bit stiff when I first got the watch, but it's beginning to loosen up with a basic open and close mechanism. I suspect this flip flop will do the same, but at the moment, oh, it is bloody stiff to engage and disengage and there is a little bit of rattle in there as well. I would have been happier to be honest if they had gone for a more traditional basic clasp with some micro adjusts. But those few niggles notwithstanding, this really does offer an awful lot of watch for not an awful lot of cash. If you are a bigger guy, if you like the look of the sub but prefer something like the deep sea but you're on a budget, less than a hundred bucks, certainly this one is well worth it. 
So there you have it, the Pagani design Rolex Submariner homage, arguably one of the world's best value for money watches, undoubtedly given that set of specs for that price tag. It's not the world's best watch, obviously. You can tell at points where that money has been spread very, very thinly. The loom is rubbish, it may as well not have any loom at all. And the bracelet clasp, I think, is a step too far. They've tried to do just a little bit too much there. I would be more comfortable with a, a regular standard bracelet clasp style for long-term wear, but quite remarkable that they managed to do so much for so little. I guess that's what happens when you spend zero dollars on design research and development. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.